well, here I am in my studio, just me and Lord Edward Yellow. We're alone. We're so ronery, so ronery. Poor Rittle us. Yes, so anyway, the appointed hour has rolled around. Um, we're a few minutes ahead. I wanted to start the stream early just to make sure we weren't going to have the trouble that we had in the last stream with nonsense and having to re restart the stream. It looks like we're going to be okay in that regard. So now all we're waiting for is is Mr. Vegan Pea Shooter to, to front up so that we can uh, find out how it is that I've been so badly mistaken about all aspects of science and physiology and nutrition for the last quarter of a century or so. And, and I believe Mr. Peashoot is going to tell us all about how a diet based on sweet potato uh, is vastly superior to any meat-based diet whatsoever. And he's going to destroy me on that because um, that's what he said he would do to anyone who wanted to make that argument. Well, I'm making it. Um, yes, a meat-based diet is absolutely superior to one based entirely on nothing but sweet, sweet potato. Absolutely no question of that whatsoever. Um, anyway. We're, we're, we're waiting with bated breath to hear what Mr. Vegan Pea Shooter might have to say on that topic. Um, and and we'll, we'll wait, I guess, until he gets his act together and finds his way into the studio and, and um, you know, does all of that kind of stuff. I'm just quickly scanning my emails to see whether or not this is uh, any statements being made around it on, on, the, on the email discussion. No? No? Nothing there. No communications. Comms check is good. No comms have been incoming. And so it's just us, boys and girls, alone. Two days ago, uh, Mr. P. Shooter said in a communication with somebody on a public forum that he was absolutely showing up. So we're here. What should we talk about while we're waiting? Let's see what's happening in the chat. Yes. Maybe this is not going to be a show at all. What a shock. Uh, perhaps it would be epic if there were two participants. It makes it a lot easier to teach me a lesson and destroy me and show me how, how wrong I've been about everything if you actually show up to do so. Um, it's past Ryan's bedtime. Mm, it's been a big day for me too, Ryan. Mm. And I did see you this morning at the live Q&A session. So that's a fail on the camouflage. The crispy bacon did not protect you from being spotted. Unlike Yellow Ted, who today has shown the most incredible skill in camouflage that you could possibly imagine. Do you want to see it again? How good is that? Is that the best camouflage ever? Yes, it is. Right. Anyway. Should be a lot of fun. Perhaps not by the looks of things so far. No, he's still not actually late yet, to be fair. Um, it's past Drew's bedtime too. Good. Yep. Yep. Well, maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yes. It, Finish early? Goodness, Ryan. We don't want to be finishing early. Uh, right. Mr. Bazooka joins us live in the studio. We're online. We're live. We're already broadcasting. I started a bit early because the last stream was a bit of a problem and we had to reset the whole stream and it was a different feed and everything. Pain in the ass. Anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Not Thanks at all. talking with you. Not at all. Yeah, good. So basically, the the nuts and bolts, the skinny of it is that um, obviously you identify as a vegan. Yes. I hope I pronounced that correctly. That's how you pronounce vegan, isn't it? Yeah, uh, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. And as such, um, everything that us meat tarted meatheads have to say is in some way mistaken, wrong and will lead to not only our early death, but the death of society and the world and the planet itself uh, before its time, and that we're basically evil people in some way. 
Um, but more to the point, you suggested in your critique of my good friend Joey the other day that you thought that it would be difficult for anyone to argue that a meat-based diet of any kind could possibly be superior to a diet based on solely sweet potato. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Well, perhaps you'd like to share with us your reasoning for that. Um, well, so sweet potato, um, there's there's a, probably thousands of individual species of sweet potato, and a, a lot of them you can actually eat the tuba as well as the, the green leafies that grow up on top. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of vitamins and nutrients and minerals uh, that's going to be available in there. And it seems to me based on the evidence and just the research I've been doing over the last few years, that's, uh, you know, that's, that is, I'm not going to recommend a sweet potato only diet to anyone, but that would be a high carbohydrate diet, high complex carbohydrate diet, which seems to be protective in terms of all cause mortality, heart disease risk, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, all of those things. And then when you go over to the meat, it's like, oh, it causes heart disease and cancer and type 2 diabetes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Would you like to point us to a single study that can inform us in any respect whatsoever on cause and effect as regarding human nutrition and any aspect of hard health outcomes in human beings over any period of time? Um, well, I would if uh, if you were open to having a data-driven debate, uh, which it doesn't seem that you are. I'm more than happy to talk about data, if you've got any data of that, of that nature. If you do, of course, that would be a world first that no one had ever heard of before, and it would be a shock because that data does not exist. The word you used was cause. Yep. The only way to establish cause and effect is with a properly designed, properly disciplined, properly um, randomized, properly powered, properly tenured metabolic ward lock-in study that's interventional in nature and controls every other degree of freedom that could possibly confound your result. Failing that, you are not talking about cause and effect. You are making an inference around association. And as such, your posit fails on that count. Okay, yeah, well, I, I thought you might say that. Um, but if, okay, if that standard that you hold is the 100% gold undeniable standard. It's not my standard, it's the standard of science. If you want to talk about cause and effect, and say there is scientific evidence to support a claim of cause and effect, those are the standards. They were put together more than 2,000 years ago. I wasn't even born. Okay, well, you know, mo most most scientists disagree with that, but let's just say if No, they that's don't. Your... No, they don't. If... Pseudoscientists disagree with that. Scientists agree with the disciplines of science and they apply them appropriately. Okay, People well, that if claim that's... to be scientists aren't necessarily scientists. I heard you yourself not that many minutes ago claiming to have done some research. Doing research is what happens in laboratories, doing experiments. Scientists do that. Reading somebody else's research is not doing research, son. Okay, so if that's your 100% gold, platinum standard, undeniable evidence, would you be willing to say that if something was at 99% of that standard, it could still be reasonably inferred that the results are pointing towards something that could have some truth to it. Have you got something that's 99% up to standard? Because again, well, that would be a world first. It does not exist. <laughs> Being an expert in the literature and what's in it, in this area, having studied it as an actual academic in this field, actually doing research in this field and publishing articles as first author in this field, I'm well acquainted with what's in this field. And I can tell you there's nothing remotely close to 99% up to standard on cause and effect in human nutrition. It is a ring-fenced area of ideology, which is underpinned largely by theology. Okay. Well, you know, that that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> Another way of looking at it would be to actually be like, hey, look, here's a meta-analysis meta -analysis of, of studies that show that uh, saturated fat is 
associated with cardiovascular disease. <laughs> and and uh, then do they do you they take know? a part. Well, I have at least one right here. And no, you don't, because there are no studies that suggest in any way, shape, or form that the consumption of saturated fat is even meaningfully associated with, let alone causal, in any deleterious health outcome of any kind. There oh, are five okay. major meta-analyses available on this in the literature that have been done since 2012. Five. All of them with multi-million person years of follow-up. And all of them agree that there isn't even a meaningful association, let alone a cause and effect artifact here. So I'm afraid um, that one fails too. Can I just ask you a clarifying question? Sure, of course, absolutely. Are you saying that these five meta-analyses um, don't show an association between saturated fat intake and heart, like heart disease events, or are you saying that it doesn't associate saturated fat with L ser serum LDL levels? Or we haven't even got we haven't even got to LDL yet. We're, we're so talking we're purely about big... saturated fat at this point. Now, okay. there are no studies that even look at saturated fat consumption in human beings, let alone associate it with anything else. All of those major meta-analyses, all with multi-million person years of follow-up, every single one of them relies entirely on respondent data. So not okay. even one of those studies can even look at what people genuinely have put in their mouths and eaten and swallowed over any period of time, let alone multi-decadal, with the changes that happen in people's diets over multi-decades, not one of the studies underpinning any one of those major meta-analyses remotely applied any control to the subject pools whatsoever. They are naturalistic observations of incidents. Oh, and by the way, before they reported the incidents, they adjusted it. In other words, fabricated it, made it out to be something other than what it actually was. See, scientists, make observations and report what they observed. Pseudoscientists, crackpots, make <laughs> observations, ignore the observations they made and report something different that suits their ideology. That's what epidemiologists and human nutrition are doing. Maybe there are no it? studies. There are absolute all of them. They're all <laughs> doing it. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I just want to clarify what your specific claim is with regard to these five meta-analyses that you're talking yes. about. Yes, I think I was quite clear. My specific claim is this. None of those five meta-analyses show any meaningful association existing between the reported saturated fat being consumed by any of the subjects in any of those studies and deleterious health outcome in human beings over any period of time, short or long. They all fall okay. flat on their face to show any relationship even, let alone a causal artifact. See, the thing is, you cannot prove cause and effect with an association. But if you look for an association and it is not there, you can dismiss the idea that causality is an effect. Well, I can agree that if you look at a meta-analysis of like a compilation of epidemiological studies that don't have the statistical power to show a connection, then yeah, you could you could conclude from that meta-analysis that, oh, well, there's no... There's oh, no okay. Answer. Well, how about five major meta-analyses with multi-million person years of follow-up, all of which have massive still statistical power, and all of which agree, and all of which say there's no meaningful difference in health outcomes of heart disease or anything else as regards the consumption of saturated fat? Well, hey, so like we done, okay. So I'll be done with saturated fat now. Um, I'll just say that I I spend my <laughs> I spend my Saturday nights reading through uh, studies like like the ones you seem to be implying. So if anyone wants to send those my way, I'm happy to debunk each and every one of them. No, you, you oh. can't debunk any of them because they are all very, very clear. I will There's debunk nothing... them with respect to the claim you're making about them. But you can't because the claim I've made is absolutely correct. I don't make false claims. That's the whole point. Well, yeah, I've been doing this for more already. than, I've been doing this for more years than you've been alive. Cool. I make sure that what I'm saying is absolutely above reproach because I know that people will try and take cracks at what I have to say. That's why I carefully craft every sentence that comes out of my mouth, word for word, every word is chosen very, very carefully and very explicitly. You cannot debunk what I have just said because it is correct. 
there are five major meta-analyses. Yes, there are. Uh, yeah, I've All seen of them. But... Have multi-million years, person years of follow-up. Correct. Not one of them shows a meaningful difference between health outcomes of any kind in any of the subject pools in those studies between the lowest quartile or tertile or decile or whatever it was and the highest. Not one of those studies shows a meaningful difference in health outcomes as that relates to the consumption of saturated fat reported by those people in those studies. Sure. So well, we're going I... saturated fat now. Yeah, I guess it'll be funny for people watching me like splice in the little clip of me debunking them all. <laughs> you really are deluded, aren't you, son? Well, I've looked at at least five studies that people have made similar claims to what you're saying, and and they're not they're not uh, accurate claims with regards to what the study actually shows. Yeah, they are. What I've just said is accurate, absolutely one hundred percent accurate. No, but well, I'm I'm telling you, I have. Right at the top of the evidence hierarchy, studies oh, to prove good, it. Good, yeah, let's talk about that thing. Good, good. Okay, yeah, yeah. go on. The oh, evidence and, and, hierarchy, you say. Yeah, and what you're hierarchy. giving me, even if I were to steel man everything you just said, it's expert opinion, which is at the bottom of the hierarchy. And I'm looking at meta analyses. <laughs> okay, so a meta analysis at the top of the so called hierarchy, as it has been pro provided to us, what you'll notice is it says meta analyses of randomized crossover controlled trials that's the kind of meta-analysis that would be at the top of the so-called hierarchy sure meta-analyses of completely uncontrolled naturalistic observations on on incidence rates which are then not even reported accurately because they're adjusted that is not at the top of the hierarchy of anything except the hierarchy of a pile of excrement. A huge number of studies that are all individually piece of shit studies, all that does is add up to a huge pile of shit. It does not provide evidence. Now, let's talk about your hierarchy while we're here, because this is a very important point. What data underpins the hierarchy? What experimental study underpins the hierarchy of evidence? What work was done in that regard? None at all. It is an informed opinion. The thing debunks itself. It's nonsense. The thing about science is it is a positivistic, empirical procedure. What we do in science is we provide data points, and we provide ones or zeros. That's the positivist approach. To, to the science, the discipline of science as it's developed in terms of experimental science works. Each individual piece of work that is put together is a one or it is a zero. The hypothesis is accepted or it is rejected. This is a dichotomous decision node that is made. Doesn't mean I agree with that, but that is how science is done. That is how science is litigated. Those are the rules we are playing by here. There is no hierarchy. There are ones and there are zeros. Any one piece of work that proves any point gets a one. Any piece of work that supports the hypothesis that was that was started with gets a one, and anything that doesn't gets a zero. There are no ones at all in the field of hard health outcomes in human beings over any period of time as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition. If you want advice on what the science tells us about what the best diet for human beings is, you have to look outside of the field of human nutrition, so-called science, because it's anything but science. It's ideology. It's anti-science. It's crack pottery. It's um, propaganda. And it is charlatans who say things like, if you don't eat your fruits and vegetables, you might die. <laughs> Okay, well, um, so yeah, there was well, nothing. So what I'm saying is there is nothing to debunk. The statements I have made about the evidence in support of your claim that saturated fat is causally related to anything, the answer is no, son, it isn't. There is no evidence to support any claim of saturated fat being causally related to anything. Are we done with that one? 
Um, okay, sure. So can I ask you a question about... Um, it was actually something you talked about when in your video response to me. Um, I was just wondering if you could briefly explain what, if any, test or series of tests could be used as a valid basis for assessing an individual's health? Depends on what aspect of that person's health you want to get at. I mean, health itself is a complex, multifaceted, uh, multi-thread um, tapestry, if you like, because you may be healthy in some ways and very unhealthy in others. The most obvious example would be to be really, really um, healthy mentally and really, really unhealthy physically. It's possible. Or the other way around. doesn't matter. If you want to know about the health of someone in terms of their blood sugar control, then you'd look at some measure of that. If you wanted to, a snapshot of, the, of an immediate what is their level right now, you would take their blood glucose level right now. If you wanted to know about their blood level control over the last six to eight weeks, you would take an A1C reading. Courses for courses, there are tests that talk about various aspects of health or various markers of health or various physiological responses, for example. But there is no test of health. There's no healthometer. You can't go to the Acme company and order a healthometer machine and have that delivered to your house because they don't exist. I'm not really sure I can elucidate much further on that. What's the what's the crux of the thrust of the question? Bye. Do jump back in as soon as you've recovered or whatever. Uh, okay, so he's my fave of all vegans. We should welcome him to the carnival community. Yes, the riding crop is out. Here it is. Psh, 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 whipping people into line. Um, yeah, it's not though, Scott. This guy's serious. He really thinks that he's actually got some um, some ability to 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 critically assess science. He thinks sitting around reading papers is the way to learn about science. Um, no, not at all. So, welcome back. Hey, hey. Welcome back to the MCG. The news is you've missed a bit of a sensation here. The score is 2 for 2 for 2. So, what were we talking about? Okay, so. Oh, yes, health tests. Right, so there's no health test. What's the what's the thrust of the question? Yeah, if, if I was getting all these accusations of like, oh, you're a vegan, you must be unhealthy, how could I prove to them that I'm actually healthy? Well... It depends on, on what aspect of health you're talking. Because as I said, it's it's a multifaceted thing. There's no such thing as overall health. I, I think okay, I well, just made that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I mean, obviously like you're probably not gonna agree that um serum LDL is something to worry about, but that's something. It is we absolutely could... not. There's there's no equivocality there whatsoever. Okay. LDL <laughs> is not a marker of health in any okay, way. So Unless number... you don't have enough of it. In which case, that's a problem. Yeah, it's a slight risk factor for heart disease, but anyway. No, it isn't. No, that's um, wrong. False. Sorry. False. Okay. Well, if you wanted to have a data-driven debate, I would be pulling out, you know, met, like the highest level of evidence, and you would just be sitting there. Uh, again, saying, we've talked about oh. the highest level of evidence. There is no highest level of evidence. There are ones and zeros. You would need to show me a one. And if you want to show me evidence that LDL is connected in any causal way to any health outcome of any kind, you need to show me an experiment. Such an experiment needing to be properly designed, properly tenured, properly powered, properly randomized in the first instance, metabolic ward lock-in for the period of time that you want to extrapolate over with human beings as subjects, those human beings being genetically identical at the outset. Otherwise, pop yourself directly off to fuck. Don't pop, to, don't pass go or collect two hundred dollars. Sorry, no. Well, there's risk, yeah, there's, risk there's, is a cause and effect statement. It requires an experiment. Do you have one of those? I can tell no. you that. Okay, we're done with we're done with LDL two. There is no experiment that can prove that point. 
None at all. I think the the ball is definitely in your court on that one because you no, would have it to isn't. <laughs> Why would it be? You're well, making a positive claim. You are saying risk. So you, risk is a cause and effect statement. I'm saying no evidence exists to support that claim. Are you claiming that? has to supply the evidence. If you want to say there's evidence that risk is in play here, risk being a cause and effect inference, then you are required to provide the empirical evidence that that is so, and that will take the form of an experiment. Now, you and I both know that does not exist. That study cannot be done ethically, it cannot be done morally, it cannot be done practically, and it's financially impossible as well. That is not my problem. That is your problem. You are the one making the positive claim. Ergo, it is you that is required to support that claim. I'm no, not, I'm not. You said risk. Risk is a cause and effect statement. That is a positive claim. Well, I'm saying if anyone were open to having a data-driven debate with me, I would be pulling out meta-analyses, randomized controlled trials as supporting arguments, and you would there be saying... There are no randomized controlled control trials that can support that. You're making shit up now. Yes, there are meta-analyses, but they are not of randomized controlled trials. Well, yeah, I'd love to see you take apart the methodology and explain why it's not uh, valid. I could do that without breaking a sweat on any one of these papers. Any one of them. I'm sure you And I have done repeatedly over several years being a YouTube channel creator, and not one person has ever come back to me and provided me with a single reason why I might be mistaken that was valid. Okay, well... Uh, link me to what your... Makes you think, what makes you think you can do it, Sam? Oh, I will. Send me your best video. I'll debunk it. I, no, <laughs> you never... won't. No, you I'll won't, Sam. You won't get anywhere near it. You have no idea what you're talking about, even. Well, you're always what makes just... you think you have the first clue of what you're talking about? What makes me think I have the first clue of what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where did um, you get that well... idea from? Who, who put that idea in your head? Oh, I just go by facts that I can confirm by a science. Facts and science. Okay, well, facts are determined in science with experiments. Yeah. Let's go back to that. So have you got any experiments to back your positive claim that LDL is in any way related risk-wise to any outcome of any kind? Absolutely. The answer is still no. Vast hundreds of studies. <laughs> there are no studies that show that, not one. Okay. Not a single study shows risk. Risk is a cause and effect statement. Well, you, look, I don't want to get stuck on this because I'm willing to have a data-driven debate with anyone on my channel and they can bring unlimited evidence and I will knock it all down. And no, you uh, won't. No, you won't. Well, you won't get anywhere near me. Not in a million years, son. All right. And anyone with more than three brain cells to rub together knows that. All right. I was a professor of health science before you were born, son. Okay, well, okay, if, if I pulled off a mask right now and it turns out that I was older and more qualified than you, would you just go vegan? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Not in a million years because I know better because there's absolutely <laughs> no way to support that claim. Then why bring up the fact that you're more qualified than me? Because I'm pointing very clearly to the fact that you're sitting there saying, oh, I'm going to debunk this, oh, I'm going to pull that to bits. and blah, 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 blah. You have no capacity. You don't have the tools. You don't have the experience, you don't have the wisdom, you don't have the knowledge. You're sitting there saying, but my meta-analysis, though, is if that is supposed to hold any kind of weight or sway in a debate about the facts as determined by science. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't once you've shown the flaw in the methodology, sure. Yeah, I agree. If you want um, to make a positive claim about cause and effect, you have to show the evidence and it needs to be watertight. It does well, not exist. Ergo, we're done with LDL as well. Sorry, that one's not going to work either. But you understand you're making a positive claim too, right? No, I'm not. I'm saying no evidence exists to support the posit you are making. Oh, so, so you wouldn't even say, for example, that saturated fat doesn't cause heart disease? I have no evidence to support that claim other than the inference such that it is, being an associative inference, those five meta-analyses, would suggest that the association is absent on a meaningful scale. Ergo, it is very, very unlikely. But I can't say it doesn't. However, I don't need to make that claim. Because all I need to do is live my life, 
eating a perfectly healthy dose of saturated fat as my ancestors have done for at least four and a half million fucking years and as such our bodies are all absolutely designed by natural selection pressures in that fashion and enjoy the rude health that concept of health that we spoke about that i'm enjoying and continue to enjoy that jobs are good in okay um or, or you can go vegan and quit that vegan lifestyle probably within for most people five years 84 percent within five years and 90 percent of those people citing catastrophic health failure as their reason for so doing those health failures born of the vast patient demonstrable nutrient deficiencies in that diet okay sure facts. um those are facts. Can I... <laughs> all right so let's just go back to the uh evolution thing you were talking about the evolution thing yes so roughly my understanding is if you go back far enough you're dealing with our ancestors who ate a lot of fruit and about then, five million years ago give or take yep and then um like early early uh recorded history you've got um people growing uh agricultural crops it seems to me that your argument is that the at some point the level of meat we were eating went up and mm -hmm. then probably back down a little bit when when do you think we started growing crops oh i'm i'm not uh uh really qualified to answer that or anything else but let's deal with this one just now okay i'll, I'll give you the answer depending on geographically where around the world there was a slight difference in the time scale at which people were growing significant amount of crops cultivating food in that way uh food it's not even food uh, it was about somewhere between eight and twelve thousand years ago all right and before so that human beings in our current speciation in our current form were walking the earth for three and uh, for three hundred and fifty thousand years before that and before that and things that speciations that weren't quite human but very nearly uh for four and a half million years before that um it was about five million years ago that we started coming down from the trees the climate was changing that was a less successful approach we saw those yummy yummy animals on the plane we stood upright on our hind legs we used our thumbs and our brains and things and we fashioned sharp pointy sticks and that was all it was all over from there for the poor old mammoths and etc Yep. Uh, so you would agree that like 99% of our anatomy came into being through evolution that was plant based. No. Well, well then why would, why would they be, um, you know, it's more, probably or less more than 90 something percent. It's probably close to a hundred in terms of our oh, body yeah. plan. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Two arms, so two legs, opposable thumbs. We had a prehensile tail. We don't have that anymore. Um, that's one of the things that's that's no longer required, so it's 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 been knocked out. But what's your point? So, how much meat uh, do you think we ate at the peak of this uh, transformation revolution? Well, it's not what I think. We have the facts. We have the science on this. It's the stable isotope it. testing. It gives us the answer. It tells us that roughly. 80 plus or minus 5% of everything that went into human mouths over the last 350,000 years, except for the last 8,000 or so, was meat and animal fat, mostly large ruminant animals. 80 plus minus 5% yeah. Percent yeah. measured as? As the equivalent so-called energy or caloric intake. Okay, so... When I hear that, my brain goes to, okay, there's there's more than one way of measuring food, right? There's calories, there's grams, and then there's, uh, what was the other one? It's uh, calories, grams, and serving size, or, uh -huh. or, or just servings in general, or like, you know, number of meals. So it seems to me that, you know, 80 plus, 80% uh, plus or minus five is, mm -hmm. Far from carnivore. In fact, that's com compatible with a plant predominant diet. No, it isn't actually. If you look at the the descriptions used by anthropologists and, and physiologists of you know any department you like, basically, they'll tell you an animal that gains more than seventy percent of its energy intake from animal sources is a hyper carnivore. So again, 
where you would get your idea that that's remotely anything like a plant predominant uh, lifestyle. I've got absolutely no idea where you would get such a ridiculous notion. Oh, just, just by the way, the, the, the 20% or so that wasn't animal based stuff was actually largely fibrous, almost zero carbohydrate containing tubers. Well, that even system stuff doesn't do anything of the sort. Why would you get such a ridiculous idea? Well, fiber is more or less zero calorie, right? Well, in effect, yes, but its, cal its caloric content is still measured as being a certain amount if you burned it suddenly in a bomb calorimeter. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm just saying you can easily design a diet where most, more than 51% of the meals that you consume throughout your life is plants, and it would still meet your criteria of 80% uh, calories from animal products because animal products have so much higher caloric uh, density than, than plants. Let's say you could do that. Yeah, Why you would could. you do that? For what possible reason would you do that? That's plants are contraindicated. <laughs> plants are not good for human beings. Plants cause all sorts of problems like brain fog. I just destroyed your evolution argument. <laughs> so now you're sitting there and laughing maniacally to yourself, thinking you've destroyed something when you've done nothing of the sort. Well, no. Well, you're the one leave, trying to leave to argue whether plants are healthy or not. I'm just telling you by the numbers you gave me, that could be plant predominant. But it wasn't. Okay, well, what data are you basing that on? The fucking nitrogen and, and carbon isotope testing, you buffhead. I just explained that to you. Okay, it's unequivocal. You... It tells us the exact numbers of what was being eaten by human beings for the last 350,000 years. Yeah, I'm, I can see, like, let's just, I don't have any, I've been seeing that, I don't have any better data, but... Just going by your own numbers, I'm telling you, it could be plant-based. No, it's fuck me. Am I the only one, boys and girls, that is not that it doesn't understand what this boy's even trying to say here? He's trying to he's trying to say he's destroyed my argument by saying something could be something when it fucking wasn't. We have well, the answer. We know what people day. did eat. It was eighty percent flesh and fat of large ruminant animals and 20% tubers. Yeah, okay, so here's an example of a tuber. So one serving of sweet potato might have... I'm going to get onto the sweet potatoes now. This will be fun. One serving of sweet potato might have 100, maybe a little bit more calories than that. A small a, a modern one, yes, one that's been selected for and bred for by modern humans to be more palatable and more tasty, yes. What's your point? Yeah, so if, if you actually adjust for the fact that it might have had more fiber back way back when, it actually goes even further in support of my what I'm saying. But anyway, a small state... No, it doesn't. How on earth do you make... Where are you getting this logical leap from? I'm just I'm just going with the data that you gave me. Okay, keep your voice below the threshold of pain and answer the question you've been asked. Outline your line of logic here. A small steak has yes. 600 calories. So hang on, hang on. We were talking about sweet potato. Now you want to talk about steak. Which is it, son? If you add those up, you'll see that the sweet potato serving has about one sixth of the calories as the small steak. So? So, it, well, sweet potato isn't even a ridiculously high calorie food. So, you could easily see how that. Can you hold a cogent thought for more than three seconds? <laughs> I'm asking you to outline a line of logic, and you are all over the fucking shop here. What do you want to say? What is your point? Okay, can you can you understand how twenty percent of the caloric value of someone's diet could actually translate into more serving sizes than the other eighty percent? If that eighty percent had six times the caloric density per serving size. It could, with some of the modern foods that are available, could that have been done by our ancestors way back when? The answer is no, because well, those foods did not exist. They were not yet bred for. They were not yet selected for. 
the tubers that were being eaten were almost entirely fibrous, rooty things with very little carbohydrate or energy of any kind in them whatsoever. The caloric content of them being estimated by what it would be if you burn the thing in a bomb calorimeter, not the actual energy you get from it. Because human beings digest almost none of the fiber that they consume. So in effect, the actual percentages are vastly skewed way above 80 when you understand basic physiology basic human nutrition basic human biological function and i think that's your problem son you imagine yourself to know anything whatsoever about those topics and you sit there making a ridiculous fool of yourself laughing maniacally thinking that you've got a point here when actually all my people who are sitting here watching this discussion are laughing at you you are the laughing stock here because you don't even understand the most basic tenets of what is being discussed here. You don't so have the most basic ticket to the to the right here. So we agree every that every child doesn't win a prize. Every child doesn't get a trophy. You don't get a trophy for participation, and you don't get to call yourself scientifically competent because you've read a couple of papers. Okay, you're out of your depth. What is your point here? So we next agree you're that going to tell me a, next you're going to tell me a sweet potato diet is better than any meat based diet. That that's one I want to get on to. Let's get to that one because that was the one I wanted to focus on actually. Okay. So So you so, want to back that one up with with anything? Uh the sweet potato thing? Yeah, a sweet potato a diet consisting of nothing but sweet potato. You said is superior to any meat based diet whatsoever and you would destroy anyone who said otherwise. Well, destroy me. Because I'm going to tell you any day of the week and twice on Sundays that a meat-based diet absolutely is vastly, completely superior to any diet based on nothing but sweet potato. Facts. Okay. Let's go. So, do you think? <laughs> do you think your? I think I do, and I think that's a difference between you and I, son. But that's for another day. What's next? Do you think your blood lead level on a carnivore diet? would be higher or lower than someone on a sweet potato diet. What's that got to do with the price of fish in China in 1945? Well, what, 1945, wait, what? I was being facetious, obviously. Again, humor is one of those things that those of us who actually have some intelligence are able to engage with, okay? okay. What I'm saying to you is what the, what the purple fuck has that got to do with anything? Oh, no, I, I would just be willing to bet that my blood lead level or my blood mercury level is way lower than anyone on a carnivore diet, like vastly. It might be, but, it might be, but that's just one factor. Sure, it's a factor that uh, favours me. me. <laughs> Not really when you look at something pretty basic and pretty straightforward, like tell me how much sweet potato do you think you would have to eat on a daily basis to meet the minimum end the lower end of the recommended intake for protein. Oh, I couldn't say off the top of my head, but I'm sure. I could, be... of course, because I've actually done the research onto this. Do you want the answer for that one as well? I'll give it to you. It's more than seven kilograms a day. Um, well, I don't know what protein uh, minimum you're going by, but that seems a bit of a the stretch. RDI. It's not a stretch. I've done the research. It's over seven. It's about seven point one kilos, in fact, to get the minimum daily recommended intake for Australians of protein. Seven point one kilograms of sweet potato, as per the standard nutritional tables of sweet potatoes. Okay, so do you think have have you seen anyone in the Western world get a protein deficiency? Have I seen anyone in the Western world with a protein deficiency? Clear, patent, obvious signs of protein deficiency, if you understand what the signs of protein deficiency are, and if you actually understand the physiology, are written all over basically every vegan I've ever seen who's been vegan for more than about three years. Okay, so Absolutely even... clear and patent signs of it. Okay, so that's your personal opinion. Uh, well, it's, a, it's an opinion that's informed by being 
a professor of health science understanding human physiology for more than 25 years. And it's underpinned okay. by what we can all see with our own two eyes. Every time we go and look at it online and see what do the vegan promoters look like, we can't mention anyone's individual uh, parents on YouTube because that's bullying apparently, but as a general trend, you just look at them. And you see yeah, the same trends them. over and over and over again. The same trends every time. Clear, clear, obvious signs of protein deficiency. And I don't just mean physically looking. I mean, you listen to what they have to say. You, you, you see the total lack of cerebral functioning that's going on. You see the brain fog. You see the Dunning-Kruger. You see the absolute lack of engagement with objective reality. Okay. Well, that that's fine. Like I'm, I'm okay with that because that is the lowest possible level of evidence that you could ever come to me with. So I don't even have to address I'm that. I'm not when providing I'm... you with evidence. I'm answering the question you asked me, which was, have you, you said to me, have you ever seen anyone in the Western world with protein deficiency? And I've said in my very highly trained professional opinion, yes, absolutely. And one example is vegans, vegan men, even worse than vegan women, usually in terms of that. Realize protein deficiency. However, let's get back to hard evidence, which is you would have to eat 7.1 kilograms of sweet potatoes a day to meet your minimum daily requirement of protein. Good luck. <laughs> okay, well, I... I We're done, I highly, aren't we? We're done because, because meeting your daily requirement for protein is a very, very, very important task, actually, and failing to do so leads to all sorts of health problems which are usually patent and clear and written all over people who propose otherwise and fail to meet their protein requirements. Um, I, I absolutely reject that, actually. But there's... Well, you go ahead. Nonetheless, it remains so. I could point you to over 600,000 people who die of cardiovascular disease every year, a disease that your diet causes, and... No, you it doesn't. Point... See, there you go with cause and effect again. Okay, now show me an experiment that backs that up. Show me an experiment. Any experiment will do, because any one experiment that proves that point would be enough to prove that point. None exists. It's been done. You didn't want to have a data battle, and it's... I didn't say I didn't want to have a data battle. I at no time said I did not want to have a data-based debate with you. So and, Max, and you will lose, and you okay. will lose. Okay. Because sure. there is no data to support your posit. You said cause. Yep. You said my diet causes a disease process. Good. Show me an experiment. It okay. does not exist. Ergo, you lose that debate before we even start. There is no way for you to win it. Simple. So, what's next? Question. Do you think it's reasonable to make a statement like smoking cigarettes causes oh, cancer? Oh, here we go. This is, the, this, is, this is another absolute classic that you buffoons go to. There is absolutely no parallel between the smoking of cigarettes and any aspect of human nutrition in any way, shape, or form. It is a totally inapt analogy, and it's going to fall flat on its face, and I'll tear it to bits easily, so go ahead, and then I'll do that. Do you think it's reasonable to, to make the claim that smoking cigarettes causes lung cancer? Okay. I think if I'm making a statement around what has been scientifically established as a cause and effect relationship, the answer has to be that the evidence does not exist for that because there is no experiment. However, the incidence reported in lung cancer in populations who smoke, when compared to so-called match pairs who do not smoke, is 11,000 500% per pack year of smoking. That is a massive change in the incidence of something. Okay. When you look at any aspect of nutritional epidemiology, you get something like 10, 11, 12, sometimes 20 and 30% for really big differences, all of which, by the way, have been adjusted and as such are invalid anyway. But let's just say they were valid for fun. That is not the same thing. That does not have the same utility. 
would I suggest to someone that smoking is a safe thing to do because there's no evidence that it causes anything? Of course not. That would be irresponsible. To suggest that because an adjusted result on a loosely uncontrolled naturalistic observation look at incidence of a disease process versus what people report they are eating is dangerous, that is also irresponsible. And I'm not prepared to do that either. So your smoking analogy is totally a waste of space. They are not the same thing. 11,500 is very different from 10, isn't it? Very, very yeah. different. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Are we done with that? What's next? Okay. So don't you think if, if you were trying to convince a skeptic and you said, well, saturated fat doesn't cause heart disease. Why would I say that? Well, that would take an I, evidence I, claim. I, I don't have that evidence. What I say is there is no evidence to suggest that it does. That is a correct statement. It is unassailable because okay, there well, is no evidence. I've already said anyone watching this that wants to come on my channel and have a data driven debate, I will crush you on that. <laughs> You've said that and you're wrong. You're completely fucking wrong. You are out of your box crazy. There is sure. no data to support your claim on cause and effect. It does not exist. It is all invalid ideological claptrap. Okay, so if you were trying to convince a skeptic and you said there's no evidence to show that saturated fat causes heart disease, but then but then you also said, well, well, by my standards, uh, you know, there's also no evidence to show that smoking causes lung cancer. Don't you think they would at least have to like weigh up those stats and be like, well, well, hold on. Like what, you know, well, that's what we've just done. Were you listening? Were you here for the last five minutes when I just explained to you how those two things are completely fucking different? Did okay. you miss that somehow? You, you just nodded somewhat intelligently when I said, do you understand how 11,000 to 500 is not the same as 10? And you went, yes, did, I understand that. Where did you get 10 from? Because that's typically around about the range of differentials that are reported in nutrition epidemiological studies. Okay. Well, what if I could show you that the absolute risk impact on heart disease risk for consuming no, saturated risk is a cause and effect statement. It requires an experiment. Do you have an experiment? No, you don't. Drop the word risk. Risk is just the incidence for a no, given it isn't. Popular. They're not the same thing at all. God, where do you get these ideas from? Risk oh, is not risk. the same thing as incidence. Incidence is something occurring. Risk is a prospective assessment of the likelihood of something occurring. If you want to say, I have a prospective guess on the likelihood of something occurring, you need to underpin that with some evidence that it is so and that your estimate is valid in any way. No such evidence exists anywhere in the literature. It never has and it never will. It is not an assessment of risk. It is a okay. retrospective look at incidents in a population of people who were not kept under control, who were not used experimentally in any way. It was a loose naturalistic observation and the inputs was their report on a self-reported data sheet on how much of this, that or the other thing they've been eating. Okay, so if the absolute risk impact of say, saturated fat on heart disease incidents. Again, have you just missed everything I've just said? You've just used the same word again, risk. There is no evidence to underpin any claim of risk of any kind for any health outcome in human beings over any period of time as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition. The data does not exist to inform us on risk. Drop the word from your vocabulary or you will get the same answer again. No, not risk. So absolute risk doesn't exist? No. Well, there is an absolute risk. There is an absolute risk of everything. Okay? There's an absolute risk that one day we will all die. It's 100%. Okay. 
okay? There's an absolute risk that any one of us will die tomorrow. And, and one of us, the risk would be higher than the other one for a number of factors, for example. However, to say there is a risk does not mean that you have the data to inform on what the level of that risk actually is or that you can calculate what that risk is. To do that, you need experimental data. You don't have it because it doesn't exist. So off you pop back to fuck again. I can I can see that you are very keen for me not to be able to ask this question because it blows you out of the water. So no, let's it doesn't. Move on. I've dealt with your question by blowing it out of the water before you even ask it. There is no, and there is, ask your question if you want to, it makes no difference. Go on, ask your question. Okay, if the absolute risk impact on cardiovascular disease incidence for consuming increasing amounts of saturated fat was a greater impact than what we see of smoking cigarettes and lung cancer, don't you think that would, you know, all, all things equal? Let, let's just say we're okay with the meta-analysis meta methodology and all that. Don't you think that would be quite a, you know, ooh, maybe it, maybe it is a bit of a risk. So now you're, now you're suggesting to my fine viewers and yours, I imagine, that you're going to blow me out of the water by asking me what if something were so that isn't so. Do you because wanna... the absolute <laughs> incidence reported in meta-analyses around any aspect of human nutrition and heart disease are not more than that for smoking. So why, are you, why even bother with the question? Because 11,500% is what we get for smoking per pack year of smoking. What we get in epidemiological nutrition studies is usually in the range of 10%. Are you, what, what, uh, what percent... Uh, what point are you referring to? Like, are you talking about relative risk or what? what's the 11,000% number? That's relative. Do, yeah, well, you can't just compare the relative risk without, uh, you know, without respect to the absolute risk. You can when one of them's 11,500% and the other one's less than 10. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. No. And, and all of this is a decision anyway. It's a decision for the individual to make. Do you believe that smoking is a safe thing for you to do and that it will not increase the likelihood of you developing a disease, for example, lung cancer? If I'm looking at a study that says, oh, look, the incidence of that goes up by 11,500%, associated with that behavior of smoking, then that's something worth paying attention to and looking at. Nope. And going, yeah, probably, I should probably avoid the smoking in that case because oh. while ever this is not a proof of cause oh. and effect, it's pretty powerful inference and it's worth taking note of it. If, on the other hand, you say to me, um, when we ask people what they ate and we believe them when they tell us what they ate even though they can't remember what they had for breakfast last Tuesday and we just write down whatever they said and then we ignore what they said anyway and make up a different stat because we're going to adjust everything to suit our ideology and report that in some journal making it look like it's really, really hugely important uh, at less than 9% so that buffoons like you can sit in your mum's basement and read them on a Saturday night and think that classifies or qualifies you to be even talking to a high level scientist about this it's a it's a joke son and so are you what what point are you trying to make here you're trying to argue the toss with me about relative and absolute outcome statistics without any understanding of what you're even talking about so whenever someone gives you an absolute risk your, no, your again, first... again the first thing i'm going to say is no not risk because you need an experiment to underpin a claim of risk. We've dealt no, with this well, I, three I times already. Both. How many times do I need to explain this to you? You do not have the evidence for risk, so stop no saying risk. <laughs> Whenever you are given a relative risk value, your first question should always be with respect to what absolute risk? And it always is. Yeah, well, you're first, with, first, with first the caveat that I correct it, no, it's not risk, 
it's a reported retrospective incidence that's probably been adjusted. So let's get that straight before we even start. Ignoring those invalidating flaws for the moment, and just taking it purely at face value, yes. Relative to what? There's always Yeah, relative to what? Uh, you're the one telling me 11,000 is bigger than 10. Well, that doesn't it matter. Is. If... Yeah, it, it is. is by but any it... metric, by but... any fucking measurement you like, it's bigger. It's a relative number. It's not. That's right. It is. It's relative. <laughs> you can't just... <laughs> you can't... I... <laughs> Can you see how much like he's trying to stop me from saying my my piece because it absolutely destroys you? No, it doesn't. Wrong again. Just saying something destroys something doesn't make it so. It isn't so. If you want to destroy anything I've got to say, you need to do so with some evidence that what you're saying is so, and you haven't done so. You've repeated yourself now four times, five times saying risk. You've already been corrected on that. It's not risk. You failed absolutely to adapt to that statement of fact, which is unassailable. And you're just trying to repeat the same thing to which I'm going to introduce and I'm going to interject again because you are still wrong. Okay. Neither well, if, statistic is anything to do with risk. So 11,500 is not to do with risk. Neither is the 10%. They are if retrospective I... reports on incidents, which can be extrapolated no further in time. Thank you, by the way, Julian. Appreciate your love, son. You're the best. Well, I'm the best, but you're the second best. <sighs> if I were to open up a document that was a meta-analysis, yes, and and read lines off the page. Yes. And it said risk, and I was just quoting, I was just quoting that. Yes. You would be like, oh, not even worth listening to, you know, he said risk. <laughs> Anyone who has watched more than five minutes of my material knows absolutely that just because the word risk is used by authors on those papers, that doesn't make it correct. There is nothing magical, canonical, or the word of God in any way, shape, or form around words written on a page by scientists. Science okay. is litigated empirically, not verbally. Yeah, well, this whole, like 90% of what you've said today is just narrative creation. That's the lowest possible level of evidence you could ever come to me with. So yeah, well, we've, we've dealt with your level of evidence argument. That falls flat on its face too. There is no levels of evidence. If you want to have a scientific right. discussion, it's ones and zeros. Proof of fact or lack of the proof of a fact. Ergo, rejection of the fact until proof can be brought to the table that the fact is so. Okay. That's how science is done. Yeah, cool. Um, so do you do you think the quote just in terms of what uh, the researchers would write on a study? Yeah. Do you think the absolute risk impact of smoking? Here we go again. I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you again because you're making the same mistake again. Get the word out of your lexicon. There is nothing anywhere in the literature that can inform us in any way on risk. Okay. Do you think, uh, like you're just, you're just telling me I'm not allowed to quote studies. All right. So <laughs> you can, you can quote studies, but every time you say risk, either absolute or relative, I'm going to correct you because you're going to be wrong. There are no experiments regarding risk of any health outcome in human beings over any period of time existing anywhere in the literature and there never will be the word needs to go risk is a cause and effect statement it implies if you change your behavior in a certain way then your individual odds of a certain outcome are somehow altered in a cause and effect relationship with that change in your behavior there is no evidence that that is so existing anywhere in the literature never has been never will be those are the facts those are the unassailable facts. 
Cool. You All need right, a new so line of reasoning. You need a new argument because this one is not going to get you anywhere. Yeah, let's just throw science out. So do you think oh, that... Oh, here you go. Throw science out. Okay, yep. Uh, your well, words are mine. Uh, no, it's not. If, I never said throw out science. You just said that. I'm insisting upon science, which is litigated empirically and experimentally. It, it's just convenient that you would uh, frame it that way when all of the actual science, like, completely flies in the face of everything you've ever said on your channel. But anyway. No, it doesn't. Move, move. False. Question. Absolutely fucking false. Complete nonsense. I am the one who is insisting upon the disciplines of science. Your oh, yeah. mindless legit. and completely untrained idea of what science is does not have any bearing on this discussion. The okay. disciplines of science were put in place around about 2,000 years ago. All I'm doing is applying them dispassionately <laughs> and not stepping outside of the realms of what I can and cannot inform upon. Unlike you okay. buffoons who want to say words like risk when you cannot inform on risk, mine, yours, or anybody else's of anything. The data does not exist to support your posit. Sorry about that. It's hilarious how you're telling me like, oh, risk doesn't exist. And then like five minutes I ago, you were like- I did not say risk does not exist. Again, you are, now you're misquoting me. Don't do that. I did not say risk does not exist. I said there is no evidence to inform upon risk. See how that's a very different statement? Sure, it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that you right, were trying so to- don't misquote me again. All right, am I clear? Do not misquote me again. It is not acceptable behavior. And it will end this discussion. Don't do it again. Right. Do you want to make a point? Try and make your point and I'll shoot it down. Okay. Because you're full it, of shit. It is hilarious to me mm -hmm. that about five minutes ago, you were saying 11,000 is higher than 10. And what you were referencing was the relative risk. And now. No, you no, you were referencing risk. I'm correcting you on risk. Oh, okay. That 11,500 does not inform on risk. It informs on the incidence of a disease process in one population versus a so called loosely matched pair population of their peers. It does not inform on risk at all. Wrong again. I, that has nothing to do with what I was saying. It does. Uh, it has anyway. everything to do with what you're saying because you said the same stupid thing again. You said risk. No. Wrong. Cool. And you All are right. now making statements about what I said a few minutes ago. So if you get that wrong, you will be corrected immediately. I will not be misquoted by you or anybody else. Try again. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. So let's... far, we've got we've got as far as you find it hilarious. Okay, what is hilarious, son? What's funny? Oh, uh, people can rewind. It's it's pretty funny. But anyway, um, just on a different. No, you're telling us something that's funny. So tell us something that's hilarious and funny. Okay. Well, you you have spent the last ten minutes constantly interrupting me, saying how ridiculous it is that I'm bringing up the word risk when you yep. just you just tried to beat me over the head with the fact that. 11,000 is higher than 10. That's got nothing to do with risk. Yeah, it's misrepresenting what risk is. No, it isn't. You are misrepresenting <laughs> risk by using the word risk as that relates to any epidemiological study on human nutrition because none of those are capable of informing on risk in any way, shape, or form. Neither is the smoking study. It's not about risk. It only claims to be about risk. Risk is a word that's inappropriately used by the authors of those studies. It's a word they have stolen and bastardized and used out of context. It is inappropriate and it is anti-scientific claptrap. Sure. And 11,500 is more than 10, isn't it? That's what yep, I you, said, and I said it because it is correct. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> I got you everywhere, son. You're out of your depth. That's why I've got you everywhere. You have nowhere to go. Absolutely fucking nowhere to go. All right. Well, uh, something you said earlier was uh, 
regarding was it regarding deficiencies on a vegan diet uh, yeah. that you brought up? Yeah. Um, yeah. Could, well, because I'm actually I'm willing to do whatever test you think would possibly reveal my nutrient status and compare it to anyone else. So, what do you think I'm deficient in? <laughs> What do I think you're deficient in? I have no idea without undertaking a bunch of assessments. However, if you follow a vegan diet, there are some likely candidates which we would be able to establish and show the signs and symptoms of in an assessment if we cared enough about you to actually make those assessments, frankly. And they're the same ones that you will have heard a hundred thousand times from everyone that tells you what's deficient on the on the vegan diet. And they're saying oh, yeah. those things because those those are the things that are likely to be deficiencies. On a case by case basis, in you in particular, what you might be suffering from a clinical deficiency in is anybody's guess until we do an assessment of some kind. Okay, so when you say broad statements like vegans are going to get deficient, is that based yeah. on robust data or are you just looking at people's faces and being like, oh, ha ha? Well, how robust is 84% of people quitting the vegan diet within five years and 90% of those people stating catastrophic health failure born of nutrient deficiency was my cause for quitting? Is that pretty robust or? No, 84%? because that. That could be the case, and it could still be the case that vegan vegan is the healthiest way of living. It, that's that but doesn't it isn't that clearly. I mean, just take a look around. All you need to, you don't need evidence. You don't need science. You do, all you need is some common sense and a pair of eyeballs. Just go and have a look around, and you'll see that veganism is absolutely not the healthiest way to live for a human being. It yeah, so clearly, just... absolutely, unequivocally, is not. Yeah, so I just asked you if you have any robust data, and then you brought up a number, and I told you that's still compatible with what I'm saying. So, yeah. What's compatible cool. with what you're saying? It could be the case that uh, whatever the number was, 80% vegans quit in X amount of time and cite yeah. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that blah, would, blah, blah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wouldn't necessarily rule out the possibility that the majority of whole food vegans are the healthiest group of people in the world yeah, without not, deficiency. That'd be fine if they were, and you could show me some examples that they are, but the, that's not the case. And yeah, it is what you need to go to. Data. Because there's no evidence, because there's no nutrition science, because there's no good stuff we can go to here, you need to go to your anecdotes. And no, whole food the are not the most healthy people I'm in the world. <laughs> they're not. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm asking for data, and you're accusing me of going to anecdotes. You're the one telling me, like, oh, just look around. I didn't accuse you of anything. I said, if you want some kind of inference on health outcomes in human beings as that might associate with various aspects of their lifestyle, including potentially diet in some way, then you need to go to anecdotes because there isn't any evidence of a scientific nature to inform us on this question. My viewing of the universe, of the objective reality in which I find myself every day of my life looking around the interwebs, is that the healthiest people are not so-called whole food vegans. In fact, that seems to be a vastly unhealthy way of living in the medium-ish term, and certainly in the long term, absolutely, without any question. Anyone that lasts long term on that diet, they're an outlier on the bell curve usually, because 84% within five years quit, remember? Um, they're pretty good anecdotes, I think. Well, it, it's got the, you know, randomized trials showing positive, uh, you know, outcomes in terms of cardiovascular disease. No, you don't have randomized trials showing anything of the sort. That's a, another false statement. No, there aren't. You're talking about the Esselstein study and the Ornish study. Yep. Neither one of those is a randomized control trial. False again, son. Neither one of those had a control group, son. That's, you know, a randomized control trial. Ingredient number one is a, is a control group. They didn't have one. Did I say control? You did. You said randomized control trial. Randomized trials. 
Still, where's they're the carnivores? Not ones? They're not randomised either. They're self-selected participants, people who said, yes, I want to try your vegan diet for X amount of time. Yeah, and it went pretty good for them. Some of them, yeah. Yeah, so where's, where's the carnivore, you know, a, a heart disease? <laughs> Well, there, there is there is only one study available in the area of the so-called carnivore diet so far, and it's another associative piece of epidemiological crap put out by Harvard, actually. It's that latest study where they looked at, I think it was 2,600 carnivores for that have been carnivores for six months or more, and they asked them a bunch of questions about how they feel about stuff and things. It's not really science any more than anything that Ornish or Esselstein did. So the only evidence... For your diet is well, let's get back pilot. to the claim you made you said there were two studies which support or even purport to support an effect on health heart on heart health cardiovascular health and those two studies are the esselstein study and the ornish study well neither one of those studies makes the point both of those studies are so full of methodological holes that it's a joke son neither one of them supports an effect of any kind for a start, did you understand that neither one of those diets that was used in those studies was actually a vegan diet? Did you know that? It was, it was far from carnivore, I'll tell you that. That's not what I just said. I said, did you understand that neither one of those diets was vegan? If you didn't, yeah. you haven't read the paper. I mean, clearly you haven't read the papers anyway because you said control trial. Neither one was a control trial. Well, Mr. The I've been sitting, Mr. I've sat and read all the studies that didn't even know what how the study was made or put together. How about this? Patients were advised to continue their statin medications. Whoops. Cool. Confound. Absolute confound. End of study. No control group. P participants were advised to continue their statins. Okay. <laughs> participants were counseled on aspects of exercise and healthy lifestyle, along with their plant-based diet that wasn't even vegan. Are we done with this now? <laughs> Mr. I'm going to bring all the studies and tear you to pieces. Um, well, okay, yeah, you're the one who... Yeah, yeah, you're out of your depth, aren't you, son? It's time you admitted it. You're completely out of your depth. You're the one who ruled out the possibility of a data battle. Let's just... No, I didn't that. at any stage, remember? At no time did I do any such thing. I have the email. False. It's, it's fine. I have the email too, and you are lying. I never said that I do not want to have a data battle with you. For a start, that would be um, even easier than this ridiculous word salad. I agree. We're going I through here because through because you would be coming to a gunfight with a sausage. In that regard because you don't you don't even understand what a control trial is you don't understand what a confound is you don't You're understand what a construct is you don't even know how to, def to define what is cause and effect and what isn't you are completely unarmed for a battle of wits with me about science your dunning kruger is absolutely stunning conveniently trailing away from the fact that the <laughs> the two randomized trials that i just brought up show they're not randomized trials they are self-selected trials we covered that too remember i'm scared self-selection is not randomized any more than control is not controlled when you don't have a fucking control group neither is it controlled when you have four or five different interventions in parallel so how do you define which one was the cause of any outcome that may or may not have occurred? Was it the not even vegan diet? Was it the continuation of the statin drugs? Probably unlikely. Was it the exercise and counselling? Was it, what was it? What caused the so-called regression, which by the way, they didn't establish empirically either of the heart disease? You clearly have not read these two studies. Or if you had, that points to your absolute destitution of competence in reading so-called scientific literature, because neither one of those pieces of work is a scientific piece of work. They are both ideological claptrap. Neither one of them is, is closely akin to science. This is ridiculous. So we agree that those 
participants experienced favorable outcomes in terms of no we don't they didn't establish that oh, they made I, some sorry. reports on some aspects of things they did not establish it empirically okay well just because something doesn't meet the highest possible level of empiricism doesn't mean it shouldn't be recommended there is only uh, one level of empiricism ones and zeros we covered that right at the beginning there is no hierarchy of evidence one has been proposed but it debunks itself are you hearing that sound problem uh, not me no sorry okay it's just on my end then fucking me stupid sound system okay so yeah there are there is a hierarchy proposed but it's nonsense evidence, okay, well, okay, well, scientific okay. evidence of cause and effect of fact and fallacy is litigated empirically and that's done with ones and zeros that is the scientific discipline that's a positivistic endeavor we have a decision to make a hypothesis is supported or it is refuted. The Esselstyn study and the Ornish study are completely incapable of informing on any hypothesis whatsoever. Okay. okay. Well, well, you know, you know, there's, there's, I, I believe nobody else can do this right up there without the highest level of evidence. The highest level of evidence, no, just repeating the same stupid thing again is not going to change any of the facts. There is no highest level of evidence. There is that which is evidence, and there is that which fails to meet the level that it can be considered evidence. It's a zero. Okay, so... Ones and zeros. Okay, and the Esselstein and Ornish studies are zeros. They're nonsense. Yeah, all right. So, what, what are your thoughts on, um, what are they like, um, individual case studies where they take someone with heart disease, yep. switch, them, switch them to a plant predominant, you know, relatively whole food diet. Uh -huh. And they experience lots and lots of improvements. And then there's, there's ones where they switch them back and then it gets worse again. N equals one anecdotes are only valuable for the one person on which they were collected. My story about how, what I experienced is only of any use to me. However, if you can collect up tens and hundreds of thousands of anecdotes, which all report very, very similar things, then possibly there's something that's worth your consideration. And maybe yeah. one day we can hopefully do some science to support some of those things. At the moment, though, it doesn't seem likely that we're ever going to be able to. Okay. So, and as so such, we... we will continue to have these discussions because people like you will have the arrogance to believe that you are remotely um equipped for a discussion in this regard okay so we agree that it's possible that uh you know whole food vegan diet is the best uh in terms of heart health no it isn't i'm quite convinced it is anything but because it is grossly vastly deficient if nothing else well um what what deficiencies are you implying that would in, impact heart health well, there are many deficiencies in the vegan diet, which absolutely would be highly likely to impact on one's heart health over a lifetime. Okay. Well, I've asked you before if you can name one. I can name any number if you like. Vitamin B12 is an obvious one. That's the first one that people will go to every single time because there's no vitamin B12 to be found in the plant kingdom. The same is true of vitamin A. The same is okay. true of all sorts of things like K. Okay, well, um, I... Uh, How about the fact that you have to eat 7.1 kilograms or, or basically 15 pounds of sweet potato a day to meet your basic protein requirement? How about that? Well, it's a bit of a straw man if we're talking about a whole food vegan diet, but I also don't really believe that you're going to be protein deficient on that. Um, I'd like to see some evidence of that. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you do it? Eat nothing but sweet potatoes... And good luck getting 7.1 kilograms of those in every single day. Good luck, because uh, that will also subject you to 
a huge and toxic load of contraindicated fiber, contraindicated carbohydrates, and oxalate as fuck. So when you say contraindicated, you're, yes. you're, saying you're the one contraindicating it. Yes. The, okay, right. so you're appealing to yourself as an authority. Not really. I'm appealing to the one and only one even remotely close to clinical study on bowel function that's ever been done regarding fiber anywhere in the literature, which is absolutely unequivocal in its results. It's the one that's spoken about on a video here on YouTube by Dr. Paul Mason. He wasn't in the study. He's just doing the video talking about the study, by the way. Yeah, I have a juicy debunk on Paul Mason uh, in the pipeline, so that'll be... Fine, you know you don't you don't son because you don't have the tools to debunk anybody on anything you've, you've shown that here today very clearly oh, okay. you, you've shown that you have absolutely no understanding of the first tenets of anything whatsoever you've sat there and you've laughed maniacally at yourself when you've been absolutely shot down in, an, in a desperate attempt to save face you've made ridiculous statements you've repeated yourself brainlessly and mindlessly when you've been shot down on something you've made absolutely no inroads into me whatsoever and you failed absolutely to support your posit that a meat-based diet is in any way deleterious or contraindicated. Nil poire for you. Okay, so do you think it's impossible to get B12 on a vegan diet? I didn't say that. And no, I don't, because you can yeah. supplement. Okay, so why... However, why however, should you? There are real problems with doing that, especially long term. Okay. Do you have any evidence to support that claim? Well, I could go through a whole bunch of evidence on that if I really needed to, but I don't because it's available for anyone that wants to read it. <laughs> okay. Um, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go out and find something that I think might align with what you're saying and uh, debunk it. That's fine. Um, no, you won't because you don't have the skills to debunk anybody on anything. I've covered that. You are so completely what, out of your depth. Uh, you are completely one? untrained, completely out of your depth, and you have you don't even have grasp of the most basic fundamental first principle tenets of what you're talking about here. You're kidding yourself, and that's the only person you're kidding. Nobody else is buying your nonsense. Not for a second, son. I, I don't know why you think it is that, that you have anything of any credence to say here on this topic. Because you've, you've fallen flat on your face today. Absolute failure. Total failure. Okay, so what, what's your vitamin A argument? What is my vitamin A argument? Yeah. That there is no vitamin A in plants. Okay, but what do you think that translates into a problem for vegans? Well, vegans have many problems. Some of them related to lack of vitamin A potentially. Most of them probably related to things like, in effect, an inability to hold on to, metabolize, and digest a sufficient amount of protein. Clearly, patently, and obviously. That's what it seems like to me anyway. In the absence Based of data, on, yeah. Well, fine, you show me some data on any aspect of human health as it relates to any aspect of human nutrition whatsoever. It doesn't exist. One of us, however, has a 25-year history as a senior academic in the area of health science, specializing in, among other things, nutrition, and the other one is you. So... Don't you think, like, do you think there's some studies out there that have valid points? There are the odd valid point here and there. Yeah, so what, on, what? On various aspects of various things, but that's a case by case argument. If you want to bring a certain paper to me and say this particular paper suggests X, Y, or Z, then I would read through that paper and we could talk about what was the good and bad points of that paper. But yeah, to what seems, end? What is your point? It just seems a bit hyperbolic the way you're always like, oh, the whole uh, nutrition human science doesn't exist and we should just, you know, toss it all out. Well, I, you know, I think... Okay, a lot of again, keep your voice below the threshold of pain. It would be appreciated by the viewers. That would be good. Just speak like a normal human being. A lot of the people who follow you take that a little bit too far into like, as soon as anyone brings up any evidence for anything, that it's like, ha, evidence? What a joke. That's because the evidence in human nutrition and health outcomes of any kind in human beings is a joke. 
from top to bottom. There is okay. very little in there that can be used as evidence of anything. There is reductionist work, which is valid and has been shown to be repeatable in a reductionist way, absolutely. But if you want to talk about the likelihood or prospect of anyone, long term or short, as that relates to any aspect of their health in any way, shape or form, you are required to bring me an experiment that would underpin that claim. None exist, ergo, straight back to fuck, you must pop. Sure, so you brought up B12 and vitamin A and you had no evidence mm -hmm. for either of those. Any other nutrients? What do you mean I had no evidence? Where's the people deficient? Where are they? Where? Fuck, I'm, I'm, you know, every time you go to the internet, you can have a look and see these vastly, hugely, patently deficient individuals who are battling and struggling and falling to pieces in front of our eyes. Really? They are everywhere. So you can see... The fact that you can't, the fact that you can't see the vast, huge, gross health, health failures and deficiencies in these people, the fact that you think they're healthy only speaks to your cognitive dissonance and your complete removal of yourself from the objective reality in which you find yourself. In exactly the same way as sitting there thinking yourself to be remotely competent to undertake remotely a sensible discussion and make any headway with me on science, because you're not. You have no business in this field talking about science with me. It's so ridiculous, son. I'm actually going to have to finish soon because I have a paid appointment starting about now. This has okay. gone longer than I thought it would. Quite happy to pick it up at another stage if you'd like to. What I would suggest to you is get be prepared next time. Come to the table with something. Because as it is, what you've done today is embarrass yourself from, from start to finish. All right. Well, I have a mountain of evidence that flies no, in the face. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You no, said you I don't. No, three? you don't. You Sorry, do not I'm have a game. mountain of evidence. No, you, you don't. Not. No, you don't. No. You do not have any evidence of anything. Oh, this, this folder doesn't exist. Wow. That folder does not contain evidence of any aspect of heart health outcome in human beings as it relates to any aspect of human nutrition because no such work exists anywhere in the literature. No amount of pieces of paper in a folder will undo that fact. It is a fact nonetheless. All right. Well, if any if any of your viewers want to take me up, um, open to debate anytime. And um, yeah, yeah, I don't think they will because I think they've seen the level that you're operating at here. They've seen the level of of ineptitude that we're dealing with here. They've seen the brain fog. They've seen all of it. And, and I'd be um, willing to bet that I'm objectively healthier than every single one of them and every single relevant. Well, you'd be you'd, you'd be wrong. You'd be completely. Completely wrong. Anyway, I really do need to finish. It's I, yeah. as I said, I've got a paid contact hour for the next for the next hour, so I need to be there. I want to thank everybody for your your involvement today with my four live streams, all in, in a row, one straight after the other. It's been hard work, and we'll pick this up at another stage, I'm sure. Um, see you all then. Ciao for now. Thanks for the super chats, by the way. Those that did. Sorry, we didn't get many more of the comments up on screen it's very hard to have a discussion and do the comments as well when you're a one-man band maybe i should have had pim in here as well all right see you next time ciao for now